Next speaker is Dr. Roman Wolfel from Germany. And Dr. Roman Wolfel speaks, speaks about the biological assessment of hospitalized cases. Thank you. What do you want? Okay. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Um, the uh, my presentation here is uh, on uh, the virological assessment of hospitalized COVID-19 cases, uh, and I'm going to share with you data which we acquired here during the uh, investigation of the first German uh, COVID-19 cluster. Um, we based our diagnostics on the protocol which was published by WHO um, in uh, the middle of uh, January 2020. And uh, the PCR protocol uh, is targeting the E gene and the uh, RDRP gene of uh, SARS coronavirus 2. And uh, turned out to be uh, quite useful and highly sensitive uh, while investigating those cases. Um, we evaluated this uh, assay according to the um, European uh, in vitro diagnostics regulations and uh, found it to be highly sensitive and appropriate for uh, human diagnostics. And then we uh, established it as part of our uh, diagnostic routine at the Bundeswehr Institute of Microbiology. Um, however, it took just a few days four days after we established the assay um, to uh, get the first sample from a suspected case, a 30-year-old um, male who presented himself at an um, outpatient clinic, tropical medicine outpatient clinic, and he had only minor uh, flu-like um, infection symptoms, uh, and he reported a previous contact with a Chinese business partner who was uh, uh, suspected to be uh, positive for or to be suffering on COVID-19 um, after the departure from uh, a business trip here in Germany. In fact, we tested uh, throat swabs uh, of this patient and found them highly positive in uh, all three assays which we established at that point of time, the E-gene, the N-gene and the RDRP gene uh, assay. Um, we also were able to uh, sequence the virus directly from the patient sample. Um, we had no isolate at that time, so we started uh, using our MySec uh, next generation platform, next generation sequencing platform to um, sequence the virus. Uh, in addition to that, we shared the samples with the German reference lab for coronaviruses at the Charité in Berlin who also did a sequencing approach using a MinI. And we were able to uh, get the first uh, sequence of the uh, this coronavirus, which was imported to Germany, and it showed a clear link to the city of Wuhan, um, which was also the connection of the Chinese business partner to this outbreak. Uh, we provided this sequence also uh, for research uh, to other scientists. Um, we were also able to isolate the virus based on the primary sample on Vero E6 cells uh, from the nasopharyngeal swaps which we got from this sample uh, patient and as you can see here in the center the virus is quite cytopathogenic. It kills the Vero cells quite uh, rapidly and we also were able to take this electron microscopic image uh, from uh, the virus. Um, the transmission chain was uh, investigated by the public health uh, officers here in the city of Munich. And uh, what you see here is the transmission chain, uh, which uh, started from the Chinese index case. And all of those patients got isolated and we and uh, we were able to contain this very first cluster here in Germany, and uh, which allowed us and uh, the clinicians at the uh, Schwabing Hospital to investigate really the course of the illness in those patients in detail. We received a lot of samples from those patients, but more uh, than we would be able to investigate in these days now. 
Um, you see here the viral load in different matrices. What's quite important is that the viral load here in the throat swaps and the nasopharyngeal swaps, throat swaps, is very high, especially in the first days. Uh, it goes up to 10 to the 9th uh, per swap uh, and uh, decreases over time. You will see later in, in one of the next slides the course uh, over time for the different patients. And on the right part of the graph, you see the viral load for sputum and stool samples. Um, um, which is also quite high, especially during the first days of the disease. Keep in mind that this is just detection of viral RNA, not the detection of infectious virus. This will be important. Um, you see here, we also tried to cultivate the virus and we were able to get positive cultures from sputum samples uh, and from throat swabs, uh, but only until the day eight uh, after onset of disease. Um, you see here the uh, positive cultures, uh, which were from throat and sputum samples. And then at the same time, when the patients got antibody production, uh, the uh, number of negative cultures increased and we were not able to identify any positive uh, in cell culture anymore. So basically after day eight or after onset of disease, we were not able to identify any positive uh, cases in cell culture anymore. Um, we also investigated something else. We looked at the replication of the virus. As I said, our PCR is only focusing on RNA detection, but if you look at subgenomic RNA, you have the possibility to identify also active replication of the virus. You see here, we have found good Identif uh, good uh, hints for active replication of the virus over the whole course of the disease in the lung. We have detection of subgenomic uh, RNA in the sputum over the whole course of disease. In the throat swaps, uh, the virus was only uh, replicating obviously based on subgenomic RNA to until day four till five after onset of disease. After that, the virus could still be detected by uh, the uh, RT-PCR, but the virus is, uh, is most likely not actively replicating in the throat after day seven of the disease. In the gastrointestinal tract, you have only minimal replication of the virus. Most of the virus did not seem to replicate directly in, in the guts. Um, let's look at the immunofluorescence tests, which we did to identify zero conversion antibody production in those patients. Um, you see here from one patient pictures of the immunofluorescence. We have uh, taken a sample uh, here at day five post onset and on day 17 post onset. And you can clearly see the increasing uh, antibody production in those uh, sample uh, in, in this patient. Um, here uh, you get a, in a, a seven, day 17 post onset, you have antibody titers up to one to 10,000, while at the first days, of five days, you have antibody production starting, but uh, less than um, uh, less than one to 1,000 uh, in the dilution. Um, another summary here, we had uh, for those patients, we had uh, no detectable antibody production until day six after onset of disease, but in the further days, day 21, day 10, uh, you had increasing amounts of IgG antibody production. Um, it's quite important to realize that IgM is not um, quite helpful in the course of the SARS coronavirus 2 um, infection because it's um, uh, um, um, less uh, detectable in this case uh, here in these patients and uh, the onset of the IgM detection is uh, at the same time as the detection of the IgG. Um, you can easily identify and distinguish cross-reacting antibodies uh, for, for, uh, against other coronaviruses from SARS coronavirus 2 antibodies by plaque reduction neutralization assay, uh, which also allows you to identify specific uh, immunos, Im, immune response of the patients. Um, and here in the last slides, I show you some um, uh, individual um, patient um, courses of the patient. We have here one patient who had uh, fever, high fever, cough, and dys 
uh, dyspnea, uh, typical signs of this infection until uh, day 11 after uh, the onset of disease. Then we were able to identify also zero conversion in this patient. So antibody production started. If you look here at the same time, he had a high viral load in the throat uh, and in the nose swabs while uh, this dropped uh, within the first five days of the disease and then uh, the viral um, detection um, in the uh, in in the sputum representing replication of the virus in the lung uh, got more important um, at the same time here for this patient we had detection of um, virus also in the stool um, while we although here in this patient we did not have, have stool samples over the whole course of the disease which is different from to that patient here where you can again see high viral load in the throat and the nose um, dropping uh, until day eight nine until zero conversion uh, while there's still virus in the in the lung and there is a constant detection of viral rna but most likely not replicative virus uh, in the stool uh, and this patient here, the last one, which I want to show you, shows a very rapid decrease of virus RNA in the throat. Um, initially, very high, uh, which also indicates that the virus might be all uh, is already there uh, before the patient develops the first symptoms. Then the virus uh, is, uh, is changing from replication mainly in the throat uh, to replication in the lung. And uh, you have a slow decrease of uh, uh, slow viral clearance in uh, stool and sputum uh, over uh, 23 days until the uh, uh, past the onset of disease. At that time, there is no active uh, replication of the virus uh, in the throat anymore, and you cannot detect it in the throat. Um, to summarize our findings, uh, COVID-19 can present as a mild upper respiratory tract illness. We did not have any severe cause of uh, the disease in any of our patients. Uh, there was infectious virus, uh, which could be uh, isolated from throat and sputum. And most likely this infectious virus is uh, already shedded before the onset of the, the disease. And uh, although there are also high viral RNA concentrations detectable in the stool, uh, we uh, we found indications that there is no uh, active replication, um, or at, at least not uh, very high active replication in the gastrointestinal tract uh, in in those cases which we investigated, and we were not able to isolate any infectious virus from stool. Um, the shedding of the viral RNA can take quite a while, which also means that your PCR will be still positive even uh, after the patient uh, got uh, clinically better and feels completely healthy again. And zero conversion of uh, almost of all patients happens within 40 days, and the first 50% of patients are already zero convert after seven days after onset of disease. Um, last, I want to like uh, would like to thank all the uh, um, people who contributed to this work, namely those um, uh, colleagues at the um, Charité in Berlin, the German Reference Center, Viktor Kormann and uh, um, uh, Christian Trosten, as well as all the clinicians who worked at the Klinikum Schwabing, uh, Wolfgang Gugemos especially, and uh, also um, Professor uh, Wermter. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your, your excellent presentation. I, I have uh, two or three questions about your presentation. First question, uh, according to your cell culture data, do you think that a person is no longer infective after day seven or, or eight? Uh, well, if you look at the main transmission route of the virus, which is uh, obviously through a replication in the throat, um, then um, most of the patients have no um, replicative virus in the throat anymore. Yes, that's uh, most likely the case at least after, um, in our case, we, we were not able to cultivate the virus after day eight post onset. So to be sure if you say, well, after day 10 uh, post onset of disease, and of course, uh, the patient had no clinical symptom at that time anymore. Uh, we had no severe case. None of these patients had to go to, to be treated at a, a 
uh, intensive care unit, for example. But for mild cases, uh, definitely uh, we have found in our group of patients um, the no, no infection after day eight. Uh, Roman, it, uh, it's necessary to take always uh, 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 a proof to, 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 to prove that patient is negative to coronavirus in the, in the end of the treatment at 10 days, 14 days? Um, negativity would mean that you, uh, depends what you call negative. Uh, if you test them with PCR, you will see a lot of yes. still shedded RNA in those patients, which is not identical with infectivity at that time. So if you would uh, screen those patients, you can screen them for quite a while. Uh, we did this with the first patients. And as I have shown to you in the stool, for example, we had patients who had positive detection of RNA in the stool until day 24 uh, after the onset of disease. So um, if the patient uh, is uh, healthy again and uh, if he had symptoms, uh, when it can be expected that they have antibodies and uh, those antibodies are not only IgG but also IgA antibodies and virus, which is basically covered by antibodies, is not infectious to others anymore. Okay, and uh, Roman, last question about Germany. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, know his opinion, your opinion about the, the, the low number of deaths in Germany compared with those in Italy or in Spain. Hmm. Uh, this question is asked uh, frequent, frequently in these days, definitely. Um, however, to be, to be honest, I'm a scientist, so I, I don't want to speculate. I prefer to have solid data. And to be honest, right now, we are not able to provide this solid data right now. Uh, currently in Germany, we are trying to take care of uh, all the patients who are uh, severely ill and need urgent treatment. And we try to reduce the number of uh, additional infections. I think it will take a few more weeks or even months uh, to analyze the data from Italy, from Spain, and also from Germany, really very carefully to identify the factors. And I doubt that this will be just a single factor. There will be many different factors um, which led to these differences in, um, in uh, case fatality. Okay, thank you, Roman.